Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's begin our complete beginner's guide to Underrail, shall we? Well, uh, we need to capture these hoppers for Brett, and uh, we need to go to the Mushroom Cave, or I suppose the Mushroom Cove, to do that. So, let's get back to business, alright? I'm going to come back in to Southgate Station. I'm going to speed it all the way up, and we're going to hit this next zone over here to the south so that we can ride the elevator. And we're going to take the elevator up right over here so that we can go out uh, the main gate like we did before to kind of do the way stations. And we're going to, um, from here, go down here. And we have to say, Malcolm, uh, open the gate. And then we come down here and we get in here. And now we're going to go off uh, into the great beyond. Now, if I look at my inventory, uh, I have a few things that are extraneous that I can get rid of or sell. Uh, my weight is just fine, but I am going to use these blueprints. You don't have to do this. You can always just sell your blueprints, but I like the idea of uh, having something as a crafting recipe just in case. It's just fun for me to get all the recipes, but you can also sell it if you want a little extra cash. I'm just going to use mine. Now we also got a lifting belt, okay? And this is really good for a sledgehammer, but right now it's also good because if you see the lifting belt, it says carry capacity increased by 30 and all mechanical damage taken reduced by 5%. And that's great. Now mechanical damage you know, not everything is that type. If we're getting shot or something, it's very good against that, but it's not brilliant against other things. Uh, so this is pretty good for us for now, just to have a belt to use that gives us some kind of uh, boost, which is you can see our carry capacity went from 160 to 190. Now I'm going to uh, go over to combat utilities and I'm going to slot my Molotov over to my utility belt. You can see I've got my frag grenade here. And I'm also uh, going to put the throwing net over here. So just fill up my utility belt with as many utilities as I've got that I want to use. I'm not going to use a throwing knife right now. Although actually it wouldn't be that bad because it uses our throwing skill. Uh, and we're good at throwing. But I want to have these on standby just in case. Once I use a grenade or a Molotov and I don't have any more, I might slot those in there. And I'm using the throwing net specifically just in case it comes in handy against the cave hoppers. Okay, um, and then any armor that I want to wear. Do I want to wear the mining helmet, for example? So if I wore the mining helmet, um, the advantage would be that we get a headlamp, but you have to run it on battery power. Uh, so, you know, it gives you a light, which is cool. Uh, and it, it gives you a little bit of mechanical resistance, uh, but it does have a 5% armor penalty. Whereas I actually want to wear my balaclava and just be a little bit sneakier. And I'm happy with that. Um, the sledgehammer, by the way. Um, I'm just going to... Well... I'm going to maybe see if old Jonas will buy it. I'm going to quick save the game and go down. I don't think he buys weapons. I think he just buys, like, um, yeah, batteries and lock-picking devices. Well, you know. Fair enough. Uh, so he doesn't really want much of what we have. And that's okay. He's looking to sell scrap, not buy it. All right. So now we haven't gone this way yet to the south out of the crossroad caves. And this is the way we need to go to get to the mushroom cove. And we will go that way. So I'm going to stealth up and head on down to the south. All right. So I'm going to kind of poke around here. And you can see that there uh, are some ruins in here. Looks like a little bit of some part of older under rail 
And I'm just going to poke around in these trash cans to see if there's anything good. This is sells well. I can use that. Uh, and this, this is kind of like, you know, just take what you want that you think you might use that has any kind of value. The coal was a little too heavy for me. Uh, and the dirty rag is just of not very useful either. Okay. Maybe if you go tailoring, you want that, but I don't. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just slowly move around. And this is where you can just explore a bit. But I really, really recommend to just uh, keep yourself close to Southgate and make sure you're taking notes so that you don't get lost because things can escalate very quickly when you are away from the friendly confines. Now, we did secure some outposts. Uh, and you can see here there's like a light. So some of these caves are a little safer than if we went deeper or further away, but we still, um, okay, need to be a little bit um, careful. All right, now here's some mole crickets, okay? And I'm just going to blast this mole cricket like that. It was extremely easy. And I'm going to try to hit this mole cricket, but I can't see it. So... I could, like, you know, go over here. And let's just take a look at what mole crickets do when I unpause the game. Okay, so the mole cricket itself, you know... I'm going to shoot this one and watch this. Uh, I can't end combat, so I'm going to just push spacebar. And now the mole crickets are coming at me in earnest. Okay, we'll stun that one. And I'm just going to walk over here. And that Mole Cricket saved his action points. And let's go over here. Mole Cricket's coming. And uh, this is just a situation where I need my um, psionics back. And so I'll just run over here. And you can see that the Mole Cricket is following me. And now we have enough left. And we blast him. Now I'm going to end combat. And I'm going to stealth up. And you'll notice that the mole crickets left no remains. And I don't believe that they're even inherently hostile. So you don't necessarily have to kill things uh, that aren't hostile. But I always like to test to see if there's the possibility that I can get an oddity. Right? Because we're only four oddities away. So when something, when the enemies like, I killed four of them, and they left no remains. That's a good clue to me that I'm not going to get anything from them, and so I just won't bother fighting them to save resources in the future. Now, right here, if I go to the map, you'll notice I'm at this section. Okay, I encountered mole crickets. I'm going to shift-click, and I'm going to leave a note. Um, rocks blocking southern path. I like to just kind of, again, leave notes to remind myself, like, hey, there's some rocks over here. And the reason I'm doing that is because right now I really can't do much to rocks. Uh, it, it, it would be very expensive for me to buy TNT or something at Southgate. But we're going to be able to get an easier way to get through rocks later. So I want to just have uh, that on my map so that I know to come back here if I want. Now check out this trash can. There's a crossbow part. Uh, there's a bolt trigger. There's a sniper rifle frame. So there's some good crafting stuff here. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take everything. And then I'm going to take all these parts. Now we don't have the recipe to make with parts yet, but... Spare parts can be good for making uh, repair kits. Okay, so now you can see that there is a path that goes over here to the west. And if we look at the map, we need to kind of move westward to get to the Mushroom Cove. But I'm going to just kind of map out this section down here. And see, yep, there is indeed also a path to the south. So we can go to the west or to the south right here. And once we make the trip, the orange line will display showing the connection. So although I do need to go west, I'm going to go south uh, this time because I need to go both directions. And we're just going to keep looking in. Well, we definitely see some uh, buddies of the mole crickets. 
And again, there is a blocked passageway of rocks. I'm just going to walk over here. Um, and I am going to go into the map and just leave an indication. Southeast. Well, just south. Blocked by rocks. All right. And we'll just go ahead and go up here. All right, and we have a sign. Okay, so let's go look at the sign. What's it say? It says uh, west to the junkyard. So if we go west from here, we will arrive at junkyard, which is another settlement. But right now, um, we are not doing that. We're actually going to go over here. And um, there's a guy right here. There's a sentry. Um, and says he's from Southgate. And he says, halt, who goes there? And I say... Um, in comp tutorial, the new guy, he nods and takes his finger off the trigger. Yeah, I recognize you now. What you doing out here? I've been instructed to round up some hoppers from Mushroom Cove. Am I heading the right way? Yes. Yes, you are. It's just beyond this passage. Be careful, though, as there are Psy Beetles in the Cove area. Um, all right. So you can get information about the Psy Beetles if you want it. Um, and, uh... You can ask about a guy named Newton. Did you see a young man go into here? Um, or you can ask, you know, hey, I thought this was closer. I'm just going to say uh, thank you so much. And you can get information from him later. Um, and by later, I mean never again. So whenever you get dialogue options in this game, I do want to just tell you, uh, you might want to read them all because as you can see right here, he gave me a whole list of things that he would I could ask him about, and now I can't ask him about them again. So, there you go. Alright, now here's a cave hopper. Okay, um, and I came out of stealth because I was talking to the guy. So what we want to do is look at the items that we have for cave hoppers, which would be um, a dog crate or a hopper trap, okay? Um, and either way, we can put these down and try to use them, all right? And I'm going to just set it down here. I'm going to put one right in front of me here, okay? Wherever I see the hoppers. And then I'm going to... Uh, there's a hole right here. I'm going to put one right in front of their hole, okay? So I'm going to just kind of put one here. And I'm going to step around, and boom. Okay, and we got one, so I'm going to just pause the game. So there's a cave hopper that's stuck right there. So the question is, like, okay, it's stuck, right? Um, how do I get it? And I'm going to use the dog crate on the hopper. And I got it. So because it had been trapped, I was able to use the dog crate. I right-clicked on it from my inventory while I'm in combat mode, pushed enter to get there. And you can see I have 15 action points left, um, but there's a cooldown on the crate, so I can't use another one right now. So I'm just going to leave combat. Uh, the reason you're able to do this and mess with utilities and get stuff in your backpack, um, well, one main reason anyway, is just that these guys are not hostile. So they're not going to fight you, okay? So um, I'm actually going to um, just kind of stealth up and stand right here. Oh, darn, I was too slow. Okay. Um, I'm going to just push enter again, and what you can do is just kind of time it so that you're waiting here, waiting here, until I can enter combat again, and as soon as one comes out, oh, okay, he dodged back in. You just enter combat, and you try to capture them. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it can happen, right? So... All right, here we go. And I did, it. I did it. Now, it might be easier to slow down the speed a little bit, but we got it. So I'm just going to walk right here. And then I'm going to go into my inventory. I'm going to right-click on the dog crate. And I'm going to left-click on the hopper. And we got him. So now we have two hoppers, okay? Um, you can see right here, captured hopper. And if I go to the notes, it says um, I just need three. So there's one down here, but he's he is much too far away. I can try to end combat, but you'll see that 
um, doing it. Oh, I just pushed spacebar, but yeah, you automatically, they don't go into combat, so you can't stay in combat mode. Um, but what you want to do is just kind of wait here, and I'm going to slow it down really easily to this pace, and just wait for one to get close. This is close enough. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to use the dog crate on the hopper, and we've got it. So now we have three hoppers all captured. Uh, and we also were asked to look for Newton, who went to catch hoppers, but he hasn't returned, so we can see what's taking him so long. So now let's just explore um, this area. So the Mushroom Cove does span into two screens. All right, so I'm going to go stealth uh, to make this a little bit easier on myself and just kind of poke around and see what we can find, okay? So we got the hoppers. You can, like, disarm your trap and try to replace it and stuff like that if you want. Um, I'm, I don't care. Uh, right now, I've got enough hoppers, and I'm going to go over here, and there's a dude um, that we can talk to. I'm going to come out of stealth. I mean, yeah. I'm going to come out of stealth and just talk to this fishing man, and he says, um, you, you can talk to him. Who are you? Uh, okay, and uh, what is this place? Uh, that's a nice cigar. Dip, 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 dip. Got a spare cigar? No. Um, and that's it. So this guy is like an angry fisherman. Uh, and he doesn't really have any info on hoppers, apparently, or on Newton. So we're just going to keep wandering around. He did. They did say be careful of psi beetles. Okay, so psi beetles, if we find any of those, would be dangerous. Now I'm going to take these mushrooms... Uh, so we can experiment with them. But we haven't found any of those yet on this screen. This is just hoppers. So when you get here, just understand that these are, you know, friendly hoppers that you can capture pretty easily. You just have to get the timing right, get next to them, and use that crate on them, and you're good to go. You can throw nets on them. You can use the traps. But in all honesty, as long as you time it, it's not that necessary. I'm going to go stealth. I'm going to save the game. And I'm going to go down here. Now here's more hoppers, as you can see. And then there's a mine shroom, which is really one of the key things that we want. Okay. So I'm going to see if I can get over to that area. Here's a barrel. Empty. And um, the only thing the coppers will do that's annoying is they'll bump you out of stealth. So uh, they make it hard to stay into stealth sometimes. Oh, I didn't see this guy. So I should have heard from the sound effect. There's a side beetle right here, a young Azura die, and he bapped us. Uh, so we need to kill this guy. All right, no problem. So you can use um, Neural Overload, okay, on th this enemy right here, the young Azura die, um, because it's intelligent. But if I just show you, uh, I'm going to just blast it a couple of times with cryokinesis and that's enough for that enemy i'm gonna end combat that was the only threat so you can end combat with him on this you know dead um we're getting pretty low on our psionics i'm gonna save the game and i'm gonna try to go into stealth but you know it won't really work that well because of the hoppers unfortunately i do want to loop around though because i want to get this mine shroom all right i'm gonna pick it and uh i'm just going to kind of keep my eye out there's another one now this is these are full Azura dies, and these are much more difficult. So we need to be very careful if we want to engage this. I just saved it so we can just mess around and see how strong we are. All right, so I can shoot this guy. And shoot him again. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to go down here. Now the... You can see they also have cryokinesis, and they're just, like, easily able to get to us, which is pretty scary. I'm going to drop uh, a fireball. Now, the thing about this is, now it's time to talk about our different psi abilities. Cryokinesis will always hit, which is another reason it's OP. It's efficient, it's long range, and it always hits. Pyrokinesis is a fireball, that's great but you'll see a percentage, meaning like I only have a certain percent chance to get it to the target. Uh, and the further away you see how the more difficult that becomes. And that's 
harrowing. So that's a little bit risky. I could also try to throw a, a Molotov cocktail over here, and indeed I'm going to do that. Um, I missed this one, but I did hit these two, and I'm just going to be happy with that result. And this one's almost dead. Okay, good, and we'll go over here. The flames should probably kill that guy. We'll see what happens. Yep. Okay, so one died in the fire, and the nice thing about the Molotov is it does create a flaming uh, ground if it's the ground is capable of catching on fire there, and that will prevent the enemies from kind of following us for a moment. So we can stand here and just blast away and use our abilities. Okay. Now, at this point, we want to make a decision. They're just coming through the fire. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually target this one with just one blast and this one. Okay, I killed one, and now I'm moving this way, and I just hope that uh, the guy doesn't have enough in the tank to kill me. He's going to maybe hit me. Uh, no. Oh, he died. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't die. He moved somewhere off uh, where I can't see him, out of sight. But that's okay because that gives me time to kind of like recover my my uh, abilities and and such. And I'll just save some action points. And I'm gonna see. Can I see this dude? Where'd you go? I honestly don't see him. Um, I can't end combat. Still can't see him. I'm in a space. I mean... Okay, he's... He might come back to us now. So, I'm gonna kind of... Move over here and just... Um, push the space bar. And move back. And see if we can see the guy. Uh, we can't. So, I'm gonna end combat. And I'm gonna go in stealth. I'm gonna save the game. Oh, there he is. Um, okay, let me see if I can get to him. Yep. Okay, and now I can start combat again. And I'm in stealth, so I get to drop on him, and we'll just blast him. I'm going to go out of stealth. And then, from this point, we've got the remains. Now, the remains of these guys are pretty good, because you can sell some uh, of this stuff. But you want to stay in stealth, and we're going to see if they have any... Um, yep, here we go. Psy Beetle Brain. So this is a oddity that the Psy Beetles have, and we take it. And there's rocks over here, and there's rubble. If you ever see rubble, and you're playing an oddity, always search for it, because usually there will be oddities there. We found one right here, a trilobite fossil. Okay, we got it, and we got another lake mushroom. Lake mushrooms aren't great. They're easy to get, but uh, we're just going to experiment with them right now. And if I push enter... Oops. Um, no, I don't want to go to combat. I'm in map, M. And I look at this screen. You'll see that it does keep track. There were mine shrooms, side beetles, and cave hoppers here. But I also want to, of course, add a note. So I'm just going to shift click. And I'm going to say, um, rocks in upper left. Just to keep a note of that. Uh, if I ever wanted to come back and blast through that and explore over here. Okay? So, you'll notice that both my hit points and my side points are terrible. So first of all, we're going to bandage up. I'm going to push Shift-8 and select myself and just uh, bandage myself to get my hit points back. And then my side points are terrifying, so uh, I don't think I'm going to re-innervate, like change what side powers I have. So I'm going to go ahead and just use an inhalant and get my side back, just in case there's any funny business. And we're going to go over here. And from this point, we can go back to town, or we can investigate Newton, okay? So Newton we didn't find over there, but we haven't gone north yet. All right, so we're going to go north, and I'm going to, uh, oh, we see beetles all over the place. So I'm going to stealth and try to get a little bit closer, and 
Um, here is one Azura die, so I'm just going to fight this guy right here. It's the only one I see. I'm just going to blast him with Kinesis and end the combat. And um, there's a hopper, and there's a mine shroom, and then there's a fenced area. I'm going to stealth and check this out. And again, they had the side beetle brain, so we can get this. Um, and they have a side beetle carapace, which is very heavy. It doesn't sell that great, but you can use this for some psionic gear um, if you have your crafting high enough. And boom, I'm going to um, start combat. And the difficulty is that you can't shoot through the chain link fence. At least this ability you can't. So we're going to have to kind of walk up here and blast this guy. And then from here... I'd like to actually use Telekinetic Punch. I have enough in the tank. Um, I'll have nine action points left uh, just to stun him so that I guarantee that nobody else gets a turn on me next turn. All right, so we're just going to push space bar, save some action points. And we're going to blast this guy with Kinesis. And um, how many hit points does this guy have left? He has actually a reasonable amount. I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to be really greedy. He can't shoot through the fence either. So I'm going to uh, walk over here. And here comes this guy. Now, he, we slowed him down a lot with our cryokinesis, so he can't follow us. And we got two clean shots on him there after we regenerated enough psionics to avoid using a booster. All right. So you can, again, pick up that if you want. Now, here's some rubble, and it's another trilobite fossil, which will, boom, level us up. How about that? And we're going to look around over here for Newton, see if we can find the guy. Check the barrel, and look, there's a periscope part, so that's another, that's another oddity right there. Now, if you get experience, you can see you gain two experience for studying an oddity periscope part. If you get experience beyond leveling up and you haven't yet leveled up, you don't lose the experience. You'll just start with that experience uh, when we level, so don't don't worry too much about that. All right, so now what I want to do is uh, level up. So I'm going to click on level up, and we hit level four, and now we can raise one of our abilities. And I'm going to just keep raising um, will because I like potency of my psi abilities. It's going to be will and intelligence for this build from here on out. Um, and mostly, I like will a lot. I just like getting more out of it, killing things faster. Uh, so we're going to go with Will, and then over on Skills, of course, we're going to max out Stealth, Lock Picking, okay? We're going to go down, and we're going to just hit our Psy Abilities. All of these, I'm going to leave Temporal Manipulation where it is for now. Um, and then from here, I'm going to... Um, boost up Chemistry to 15... I'm going to boost up my throwing all the way. And then I'm going to go biology to 30. And I'm going to put the rest in temporal manipulation. The reason I'm doing this, I'll show you in a moment. And do we get a feat? We do. So what feats do we want? Well, um, we have a lot that have opened up to us. Conditioning, expertise, nimble, um... Nimble is good, uh, for sure. But if you scroll down, you're going to see some stuff that is becoming insane for us. Like, for example, Psy Reserves increased by 30%. Okay? Um, this is very helpful. Uh, it helps you save on inhalants. This doesn't imp improve your... how many Psy you get in combat, but, it, I mean, like, in your first bar... But it improves your reserves, which means you have to use inhalants less. I like this a lot. Um, force user is also amazing. Uh, for telepunch, it inc it doubles the damage you do with it. Um, gives you 50% more force field health. Um, and your force field lasts longer. And your force emission costs one less point. So this is also very good. You can get thermodynamicity, um, which will let you switch between a, like, a cold ability and a hot ability. Uh, if they... Uh, register and get like some deduction. Cerebral trauma boosts neural overload. Okay. Um, so 
Uh, you can reduce enemy resolve. But right now, um, for money and just everything, I'm going to boost my um, Psy reserves, and I'm going to accept that. So you'll see that, like, now our reserves go up to 650, um, and, which just, you know, uh, helps us. At least in my opinion, I like that. But you don't have to take that. You could take thermodynamicity or something else and, you know, um, be fine with it. Let's check the junk pile, and it's empty. And we have a building to enter. But before we enter the building, I'm going to go to the crafting screen. And we're going to go to process planter fungus. And I'm going to throw a mine shroom over here, and I'm going to throw this over here. And you can see that we can make the unsaturated psionic catalyst, which takes biology 15. So I'm going to create all that we can make, and we made seven of them. And now, if I want to make a Psy Booster, I just need these, okay, and these. And we need, um, we have the skill to make it, right? So we can just make Psy Boosters. Now, if we want to make Inhalants, um, we need this, and we need this, and we need this, okay? And we're good to go, right? So uh, this takes biology 15 and chemistry 10. Now, the reason I'm looking at these is because I think my biology being at 30 is good enough for us uh, for now. It, it might actually be too high, but I can no longer, I can just stop putting points at this point into uh, biology and be really happy about it because I can now craft the desaturated psionic inhalant, which I'll do. I'll make one. And then I can go over here to Psy Booster and I'll just double click the ingredients. It puts them in the right slot and we'll make however many we can make. And we, you'll see in red here, we don't have enough uh, psionic catalyst for that. We could try to make a health hypo, uh, but we are missing uh, a key part of this. I'll show you. Um, we are missing uh, insectoid saliva, right? So we could process a plant or fungus, okay? And we can click on this. And now it's time to say, well, what about all those lake mushrooms? The lake mushrooms, unfortunately... Um, do not process into anything. So they aren't really worth the paper that they're printed on. Ha ha. So they're, you know, something you can sell minimally. They're easy to gather. Um, but for us right now, they don't really do anything. So we can extract humor though. Let's see this. Insectoid salivarium. If I click on this item here that we just got um, from one of the Azura dyes, and then I use my um, ampule and I create this now... I have made the saliva so I can make myself a health hypo. So boom, 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 and biology 25, check it out. So putting biology to 30 now allows us to make also health hypo. So there's improved, there's other potions you can make, other um, consumables, improved versions of these things, um, potentially. And, you know, you will get your biology high enough if you want, but you can always see it right here if there is a skill requirement. And I'm going to make it just because I can, and I'm happy. So now, look at me. I have um, nine health hypos, six inhalants, and four boosters, that, and some of those we've been able to make on our own. So we're doing beautifully. We are now level four. We've got our will up. Uh, we have completed the hopper portion, and we're still looking for our good buddy lost out here somewhere, Newton, and we will get into that next time, but I wanted to just show you uh, how to look for oddities in rubble, um, how to craft gathering mushrooms that are good, mushrooms that aren't good, taking out Azura dyes, doing this quest. The hoppers took me forever the first time. I just didn't understand the mechanic. So hopefully that's useful to you. You can see here that this sign says it goes to junkyard to the north. So there's a passage that we'll look at also on the way back, which is kind of like a shortcut um, to junkyard, uh, but it's, uh, well, I'll show you and the particulars of it next time. So you can see, uh, we didn't miss anything. I'll tell you that much going the way that we did. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this useful. Take care.